is literally how Jesus said people will know. From him, he said, how you treat one another, how you love one another, is how people will know that you're from me. So when Christians unite, Orthodox, Catholic, Protestants, and they unite, they yell, Christ is king, yeah. spread the gospel, that is it. That's right, that's it right there for me. But yeah, it's something that kind of bothers me because I feel like, that's fine, that's all great, but like the attacking of Islam, I don't see that as compatible with the uniting, especially given the position of the Pope. Yeah. So like, I believe it was the Pope before this one, John Paul the second. So um, the Pope before Pope Francis, he commissioned Vatican II, I believe, okay. the council. He, he commissioned what? Vatican II. What's that? Vatican II, the council. Oh, okay. Vatican II, you don't know Vatican II? No, I'm not a Catholic. Okay, fair enough. But what he stated in Vatican II, and what was unanimous in the council, was that Muslims and Christians are worshipping the same God in one way, shape or form. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So how can you unite with Catholics yeah. if they if their Pope is claiming to worship the same God as the Muslims? Well, I, I think there's there's nuance to this, bro. Um, how, yeah. how can you attack Muslims and well, attack... I don't, I don't attack Muslims. Yeah, sure, sure. I, I, I attack Islam. Okay, you know, fair, like, fair, fair. like you, for example, Tay, I just met you today. No, no, I, no I don't mean attack as in like, I mean like as Critic in... Criticize. Criticize, yeah, criticize. Yeah, okay, criticize, gotcha, gotcha, sure. okay. yeah um, so if, if the Pope says something, right, yeah. um, that Muslims and Christians are worshipping the same God in some sense, Yeah. Uh, he, if he said I can pull out I, the quotes, but okay, right, I don't believe you're a liar. I'll, sure. I'll have to check it myself. Can I clarify quickly what yeah, you're sure, clarify what that. He said. Because what you're quoting from is a document in Vatican II called Lumen Gentium. Yeah. Right? yeah. So in Lumen Gentium, what is meant there isn't that they have the same description of God, but that they are trying to describe the same God, but they have different descriptions. So, so for example, Muslims and Christians both would say that their God is the God of Abraham, right? <laughs> So say, for example, you have a father who has two children, right? Sure. And one child slanders the father, and another child describes him uh, in the way in which he actually is. Mm. Now, just because one child describes the father differently than the other, doesn't mean they're describing a different father. So that would be the Catholic perspective on it. So it's a bit more nuanced than just saying, oh, they say we believe in the same God. Mm. No, but the same God is in the same entity. Same, same entity, same entity right? Yeah, so you yeah. can't, that's, like when Christian, like yeah, right? yeah, so that's what that's what you're saying, right? Since you acknowledge this entity. Good logic, yeah. good logic. He's one. Oh, no, 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 one. no, they, 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 they can clarify, we're, we're having a good no, no, conversation. Uh, I would so, jump so as win. You, you can do no whatever good. you want, bro. No, sure. As long as, long as you're respectful. It's all right, brother, brother. As long as they as long as they all keep it fine. We're cool. We're cool, yeah. So sorry, um. You, you were mentioning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was just like the Catholic perspective on Newman Gentium. I'm not a Catholic myself, but just as someone who's looked into the tradition, um, there is slightly more nuance than just saying but he's, that they yeah. believe it, that Muslims and Christians worship the same thing. But there's been multiple statements by the popes. So like there was one where he went to Egypt or Morocco, I believe, and was talking to young Moroccan or Egyptian Muslims. And he was also talking about, we worship the same God. So it's not just one statement I'm taking out of context. I'm taking all of these statements by the recent popes, yeah, yeah, putting them together. I'm, I'm saying that it's yeah. slightly more nuanced than just simply saying the pope says they worship the same God and leaving it at No, that. No, I'm not, I'm not. I'm, I'm saying the same God is in the same entity. We have yeah. different understandings, of course. We have different concepts of what that God is, yeah. but we all, but the Pope is preaching that we believe in the same God as in the same being. The same entity, the same yeah. So when Christians... Right, but we don't, but yeah, we the don't. Catholic is going to defend this. So for example, yeah, in sure. uh, the book of Acts, right, when Paul is, um, is it on Mars Hill? Uh, yeah, that, talking, talking to the... Talking to the, the pagans, yeah. the area pagans, yeah. right? And they have the so, statue. Yeah, and they have this statue, right? And Paul says to them, you worship what you do not know, right? Yeah. And he's saying what you actually seek to worship is the true God. And that's yeah. going to be like a classic defense of this understanding. Sure, that's but how they would specifically understand. But how do you feel about Protestants that attack Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? So they start saying he's like a moon god, a stuff Allah, okay, and stuff yeah, like that. How, yeah. What's your position so on I, that? I think that what they're trying to attack is the description of Allah. No, 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 they're not. Than just like God in yeah. itself as a concept, right? Yeah. So like, because you you would say that Allah is just like really is just the one true God, yeah. right? And regardless of what we believe, right? Sure. And so now what he's what he's leaning to is that Islam has a description of the one true God mm -hmm. that is opposite of what we would say is the truth of the one true God. Sure. So the descriptions and the attributes and um, you know the actions of Allah in Islam mm -hmm. do not match the God of Abraham is what we would say. And so this is why if you come to me, I would say, yeah, we don't have the same God. 
you know, because we obviously believe but, in two different entities. But you're however, saying, but you're they, saying you do have the same, we do have the same God. No, he's, he's so saying... The Catholic position is that what we are attempting, the concept of, of which we're attempting to reach is the same God. It's just the description. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. You can't fine. debate with him. No, 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 no. no. What's wrong? Sure, 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 sure. We'll, we'll, we'll just no, no, do it. Yeah. Sure. sure. I just wanted to like make it clarify. No, but, like, but you're seeing his position as being problematic, right? No, no not necessarily. Because I understand what he's saying. Yeah. And I understand that the position that he's, he's saying that the Catholics will defend sure. is that we have... Um, you know, we have this idea of this one entity creator of a heaven and earth. Mm. We all have, we, we share that commonality. Yeah. Okay, so he's saying we have the same idea of this entity, but how we identify this entity is completely different. But if the Pope somewhere set, has said, we believe in the same one true God, is that problematic? I'm not, I don't want to miss, I, I'm pretty sure I've read that somewhere. But if he did say that, would that be an issue? Uh, for, for me, yeah. if, he's, if he's saying that we believe in the same one true God in the same way, like, you know, your God is my God, that would be a problem. Okay. If he's saying that we have, we both believe in one entity that created the heavens and the earth, yeah. however we defer on who that is, hmm. I don't have a problem with that. Not necessarily. Okay. Yeah. And, sorry, you came up to me. You mentioned, um, you want, yeah, if I had a few questions for you? Yeah, yeah, if you want Cool, maybe I, I've got to go because it's yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one more. Um, so I was wondering, I've been doing a bit of research into this, and I was wondering if you're familiar with Clement of Rome. I'm, I'm not huge on church. I'm studying that. Okay. Yeah, I'm studying that. But okay. um, I, I got a few brothers if you want. Like, they're really heavy into church history. They can tell you all about the church fathers. Sure, because what I've read, like, <laughs> when I've been doing my research, it's been very interesting that this figure, Clement of Rome, who's meant to be one of your first church fathers, the first church father, I believe, he, his, um, he's often associated throughout history as being the same historical figure as Titus Flavius Clement. Titus? Flavius Clemens. And this person is a member of the imperial household. So he is often seen, yeah, yeah, he's often seen as being a nephew of a Roman emperor. So it's just interesting to me how in the early church, um, your first church father throughout history has been associated Clemens as... Of Rome is not the first yeah, he's, not, he's not even the first pope. Yeah. Well, who is the first church father then? So if you're talking about specifically of the Roman line of popes, it would go Linus. So it goes from, so Jesus makes Peter the first pope, sure. then it's Linus, then it's Anacletus, then it's Pope. Sure, maybe I misspoke. Um, you know like um, Ignatius, Irenaeus, and... Um, that's the line from John. Yeah, yeah, yeah but the, what's the three famous ones called together? Do you know what I'm talking about? You're talking about trying to allude to the early apologists or which one? Yeah, uh, it, it doesn't matter, but like Clement of Rome is seen as one of your early church fathers, right? Yeah, yeah. So, he is a, so is it problematic for you if um, one of your early church fathers was a member of the Roman imperial household? Would that be an issue? What's like the evidence for this? So it's just been like throughout history it's been reported as that being a potentially a link. But one thing I can definitely so just mention. Yeah, but I'm just okay. wondering because you guys haven't given me an explanation on what he was, right? So. That's well, just, we, we haven't had an explanation of what of that. Like we haven't, sure. you know, we're, but one we're kind thing, of going off the air right Yeah, yeah. so w but one thing, um, yeah, because for me, something I found really interesting is there's a connection for me between um, early Christianity, like super early Christianity yeah. in the first century AD yeah. and the Roman Empress household. So, for example, one of your early, early Santas is a woman called Domitilla. Are you familiar with like Santa Domitilla? No. So she's seen as one of your early Santas. Is anyone here familiar with Domitilla? The Ninja okay. Turtle. Sorry? That's Donatella. Uh, Domitilla, Domitilla. Um, so, the Ninja Turtle. <laughs> so, so where does this lead you in like... So Domitilla has message. been... Domitilla by the Catholic and Orthodox tradition is recognized as being um, the niece of the Emperor Vespasian. Okay. Okay. So she is so a saint. Um, yes, D-O-M. I. I. Yeah. D O M I T I L L A. Okay, but maybe you'll come up. But in the Catholic tradition and in the Orthodox tradition, she's recognized as being the niece of the emperor, okay? Okay. No. So that's in your own tradition. She. What is the, impo what is the importance of this? So the importance of this is why is, like, why is, why is one of your earliest Santas associated with the imperial household like for me but, well, what, I that, thought, I thought, what would that have to do with like the truth of christianity so 
the truth of Christianity, it's just like, it's a, there's a few things that are concerning when I look into this. So for example, on her catacombs, so like her, where she's buried and like the place of burial, there is, um, there is a pagan symbol on her catacombs, which is also recognized as being the symbol for the early Christians. But what does this have to do with the truth of Christianity? The truth like, of Christianity. Let's, say I was to, let's say I was to grant that. Yeah. What is, how does that refute Christianity as a, as a truth? I'm, I'm, I'm attacking the historical... Um, I, I'm, what I'm trying to show you is I don't believe that the historical tradition that Christianity teaches about what happened in first century Palestine is accurate. Okay, so what's inaccurate about Jesus dying by crucifixion of the Pontius Pilate and rising again at the third, on the third day. So what I'm trying to say is in the first century Palestine, there was one thing that's been massively ignored here is the Jewish revolt that was happening around about the same time the gospels are being written. Um, are you familiar with the Jewish revolt? Yeah, so, you know, there was like a massive uprising of Jewish people in, fir in first century Palestine. Yeah. Um, Sorry, it's a bit of time's going by, but yeah, so a massive uprising of Jewish people in first century Palestine. Um, some water? Yeah, yeah, if yeah, that's okay. Sure. <laughs> that's sweet, man. I've, uh, you know, in Eid, like, it's tradition to fast before. Oh, nice. Thank you, man. Yeah. No. Do we need to? That's just one big one. I got, yeah, you could get a, like, a water. No, no, I'm going with it. No, no, no. That's why he's going with it. I should have. Um, I thought I had a. I thought I had a water bottle. Yeah, don't worry. Right. You might be loud. Hello. Wait, I'll, I'll try and I'll try and like. Okay. Best. I could have sworn I had a water in here. My bad, bro. That's right. Oh, you can have eight. Yeah. I want to get in on something. It's fine, but yeah. So what, what I'm trying to say is, um, the first century, in the first century, the Jewish revolt. Yeah. I feel like it's been massively neglected about the impact that had throughout history. Thank you, bro. Thanks. So I there we go. Tiny movement on When you when you're going through this much history, that's what it does. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, so I'm trying to. I want to know yeah. how this hinges on the truth of the of Christianity, the resurrection yeah, so, of Jesus Christ. So, in the first century, in Palestine, yeah. there was a massive Jewish uprising against, um, there was multiple Jewish uprisings, there was multiple Messiah claimants um, yeah. that were trying to liberate them from the Roman That's occupation, right. Right? right? So first century Palestine was under Roman occupation. Yeah. Um, under Roman subjugation, there was a lot of um, horrific atrocities that was being committed against the Jewish people. Yeah. The Romans, when they looked towards the Jewish people, just let me know if this is your understanding. Um, the Romans, when they looked towards the Jewish people, they saw them as um, backwards yep. in their understanding. Yep. They saw them as um, extremists, yep. per se. Yep. And less than, yeah. And there was multiple efforts by the Romans to try and integrate the Jewish people into their empire in a pacified way. Because they saw their religion as very um, aggressive, very extremist. And they wanted the Jewish people to become incorporated into their like world religion, which so, was Roman paganism in a way. Uh, so Is how that did, your understanding? So, well, yeah. yeah. But how, how, does, how does that, again, like, you know, how yeah. do we get to when it comes to Jesus yeah. claiming to be who he was, yeah. dying under Pontius Pilate by crucifixion, yeah. and the claims by his believers that they saw him risen again? Yeah, so what I'm saying is, I have to give the whole narrative if that's okay. It's going to be a while, but then we'll you get to get the whole we'll get, narrative. Because it's a completely different perspective I'm trying to show you. So, Do you, do you believe Jesus was, was crucified? No. Do you believe that there was a crucifixion event? Yeah. What do you think okay. happened? What do you think happened? Yes, but I'm saying... In the first century Palestine, there was multiple crucifixions of multiple Messiah claimants. Is that correct or not? Uh, it wasn't just Jesus who was crucified on his own. There was multiple claimants of being the Messiah title were who were crucified. Like, yeah. like who? Um, for example, the Egyptian, the Samaritan. Um, the Egyptian and Simon, the Samaritan? Um, Simon the Zealot. Simon the Zealot was crucified for claiming to be the Messiah? No, 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 sorry, not Simon the Zealot. There was... Um, there, there was multiple claimants of the messianic... Don't sound right. Don't sound right. No, no, there was. There was. No, I'm listening to you. Sure, but there's two ones I gave you there, the Egyptian and the Samaritan. Who are they? They were both um, claimants of the messianic title, and they were crucified 
during the uprising. What, what, what about this Jesus figure? You don't, you don't believe Jesus went through a crucifixion at all? No. So who do you believe, like, okay. So the reports of a Jesus yeah. being crucified under Pontius Pilate, yeah. you don't believe that that happened? No. So what do you believe did happen? Do you believe somebody was crucified at all, like at that time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, are, like quite similar to Ibn Kathir's, um, I don't know if you're familiar so you, with this. So you believe in the substitution? Um, I believe that um, Jesus, Jesus was like raised okay. and someone was crucified in that position. Okay, so you are. Right, so just to be clear, you believe sure. that you believe that but can we get to I want to try to crucify Jesus yeah but Allah saved him yeah. somebody else was substituted yeah. so you believe he was raised up he's with Allah now yeah. and okay got same, you same. so you do believe that there was an event surrounding Jesus yeah, but I'm saying you're trying to make it look like this was a one-off event there was multiple crucifixions going on by the Romans no but there's, there's, during that period a, even Pontius Pilate no what I'm saying is, no what I'm saying is is that there's a one-off event of Jesus of Nazareth being crucified yeah. Right, so I'm not talking about everybody else. Yeah. I'm talking about specifically Jesus of Nazareth, yeah. him being crucified. And do you believe that there was a situation going on where somebody named Jesus of Nazareth was going to be crucified? I believe there was persecution by the authorities on the prophet, right? Uh -huh. But I believe he was saved from crucifixion by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But you do believe they tried to, they wanted to crucify. Him. That was like the intention was in the long term was to you. get him, right? Basically. Yes. Yeah. Okay, get you. All right, yeah. so. So you, we do believe, we like we we can. Like the reason why I'm asking this is because I'm trying to see sure. where, where I'm, uh, yeah, and trying right. to get where you know. Let's yeah. get to the crux of it. Sure. So if there was an event that was taking place yeah. regarding Jesus of Nazareth, yeah. right, that there was going to be a crucifixion. Yeah. Now, of course, to from our narrative, Jesus was crucified. With your narrative, he was actually substituted and saved. Yeah. Okay. Who do you believe was crucified in this place? He, he, that's what, that's oh, sorry, 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 repeat, repeat, repeat. You believe that he was substituted, Allah saved him and substituted him with somebody else. I'm saying, I'm saying like that that is a position held in Islam. Is that your position? My position, I'm trying to get to the actual issue, right? So the actual issue, the issue is, no, no, the actual issue is um, that the Romans were suppressing the Jewish people and they're trying to make a pacified version of their religion to incorporate them into their empire. And Christianity was that religion oh, that pacified the so Jewish people. So you're saying the Romans yeah. uh, influenced Christianity. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So the so okay. Got you. So that's why I had to build a narrative got you. because it takes a while. Yeah. All right. So the Romans influenced Christianity. Yeah. Now I see where you're. Now sure, I see sure. where you're at. So if the Romans, you know, influenced Christianity, mm -hmm. how is it that the Romans yeah. are so in touch with Jewish prophecy, the the words of the prophets? Yeah the prophecies of the Messiah, how do you reconcile that that much knowledge and familiarity yeah. with the Old Testament if these if this was actually a Roman religion? So from my understanding, Romans were already flirting with some type of Judaism. So Philo of Alexandria, for example, he was quite prominent in the Roman Republic or the Roman Empire at that time. Okay. So Jewish thought was quite a heavy influence on the Romans in first century um, in the first century of the Roman Empire. But, but that still doesn't explain. Also, for example, so, okay, let me show you from the yeah. right, from the top, right? So Vespasian and Titus were two emperors who were um, who were from the Flavian dynasty, right? I'm not sure if you're familiar with no, that. No, man, you, you history, but okay, sure, sure, I'm sure. learning from you. So, you know Nero, right? Yeah. You know Nero, he commissioned the war against the Jewish people, yes. right? In terms of the first Jewish revolt. He sent an army to quench the Jewish people, right? And the people he appointed ahead of that army were two generals, Vespasian and Titus. But how does that, okay. how did that tie when in with Vespa their knowledge? Yeah, yeah I'm going to get that, I'm okay. going to get that, because these things take a while. So Vespasian, he is um, in charge of leading that Roman army into Palestine and quenching the Jewish revolt. When he's almost done quenching the Jewish revolt, he gets to the Temple Mount. Um, there's um, the, the, the most prominent rabbi at the time, Rabbi Yohanan ben Zakkai. He's standing at the Temple Mount. He tells him, oh, Vespasian, you are the mighty king prophesied in Daniel. So he's kind of like sucking up to him in a way, saying that you are the one that okay. was destined to conquer. The second he hears that, a messenger comes from Rome telling him that Nero has passed away and that he has a chance of becoming emperor now. So he put that situation where he's been prophesied in Daniel and Nero passing away together to show that that influenced him massively in his life as in like this means that I was chosen, I am the Messiah. So this kind of influence, this influenced his thinking and going in the future that he started to think he's the Messiah okay. in some way, shape or form. 
So he was a lot more, you know, Nero was very persecuting towards Jewish and Christian. Yeah, but I'm not seeing the So I'm saying, I'm saying from Vespasian's era, to Titus's era, they were a lot more accepting of Jewish thought in the empire. You can't name me a single definitive um, martyr, Christian martyr, from either the era of Vespasian and Titus. If you guys can, I'm happy to be that, proven wrong. What, what does that have to do with what I asked? So I'm saying that Vespasian and Titus were, um, they were festering this like new kind of Jewish influence thinking in the but Roman Empire. But it wasn't empire. new. Even you said that there were messi messianic people who tried to claim to be uh, mess messiahs and they ended up being killed off. Yeah, but that so was under Nero. New. And what I'm saying is back then, they used to see the Jews as extremists and everything. What they still happen? did, but no. they were more open to a specific type okay, of Jewish I, I thought. Want you, I want you to know that I hear what you're saying, yeah. okay? Yeah. But my problem is I do not see a link where you can say that the Romans made this Jesus up and I'm not attached him. Up. Well, but you, but yeah. okay. You're saying that the that the Romans had a huge influence yeah. on this dying crucified Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, who's the Son of God, rose again on the third day. You're saying that the Romans basically did that. They like they, 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 they shaped that model of Isa al Islam. They made that version of him. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so they made the okay. And if you look into the historical record, I got a more accurate version of him is someone who is helping so you don't, liberate so, the Jewish so people this. from the Roman. I got authorities. you. Do yeah. you believe that the in the Old Testament in the prophecies yeah. that it had this view of a dying, suffering Messiah? No. Okay. Have you read Isaiah 53? Yeah. So what are your thoughts on Isaiah 53? Well, I, I don't believe the Christian account. Obviously. Oh well, let, let's just let's just go sure. through. Yeah. Only it's only 12. I'll only read a few. Okay. Okay. okay? <clears throat> but if you're going to read it, I don't take that as authoritative. So that's that's no. I, I'm not asking what you yeah. see as authority. Yeah. I'm asking, according to Old Testament prophecies, do you believe it portrays a dying, suffering Messiah? You said no, so that's no. why this is relevant. Okay. Sure, sure. So like maybe it'll change. Maybe it'll flip your view a bit. Like oh, okay, they did actually have this mm -hmm. even before a Jesus, before a, a John, before a, a Matthew. This was already told and you know described hmm. 700 years before the first century. Okay, so let's let's go to Isaiah 53. How do you know that is for about Jesus? Well, we'll see. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna read a few verses. Oh, and you, you tell you, me what you can read like. it. You can read, read it. I've got my I've got my I've got my position on it. So I'll let you read it and I'll let you give your narrative. But then can we go back to the, the original point? Well, this this is this is what it's about. It's about I'm talking about the narrative. Like this doesn't tell you what to do. I don't have no problem. So I, I won't read the whole thing. I only read a couple. So just to tell. All right. So peace. Yeah. God bless you, brother. So it says, look. Yeah. It says. He is despised and rejected by men. Yeah. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Yeah. And uh, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. So they thought he was being punished by God, right? But they despised him. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, for our sins. Upon him was the punishment that brought us peace. And by his stripes, by his wounds, we're healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the sins of us all. Sure, okay. So do, do you, does this portray... So, I mean, there is other alternatives to what you're saying, as in that is, um, if you read it in the full context, it's talking about the Israel as a nation. It's not. That, and also, later on, if you read, carry well, on it, reading, it, it if you carry on reading, it yeah. says he will see his seed. Yes. And it's talking about the literal seed. Okay. As so in literal uh, offspring good and point, children. Good point, good yeah. point. So let's break this down. Number one, you, the first thing you said, this could be about Israel, the yeah. nation. Let me show you how it can. Okay? So like, for example, uh, if we go to verse number... Number eight. Yeah. So you you understand the speaker's Isaiah, right? Yeah. And so who, I mean, I have them issues with Isaiah well, no, writing no the entirety of no, Isaiah. No, 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 it's okay. But the, sure. this is this is said to be Isaiah, assumed to right? Be assumed to be Isaiah. He's a, he's an Israelite, sure. right? Okay. So who are the people of of Isaiah? Who's this people? Israel. The Jews, exactly. Okay. Look. So it says here, um, and they made his grave with the wicked. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me go up. But. He was taken from prison. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Yeah. And who will declare his generation? 
for he was cut off from the land of the living. So he dies, right? I mean, that's your interpretation. What does cut off from the land of the living yeah, mean? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> so he's cut off from the land of the living. He yeah. dies. Not for himself, it says, for the transgressions of my people. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Isaiah says that he dies. Yeah, but you could also, just from for, what you're saying, I can uh -huh. also see that as in being the nation of Israel, where it says he was cut off from the land of the living. So uh -huh. that being actual... The region of Palestine. No, that's right? not. No, then there's no, there's no you, interpretation. He was cut off from the. No, no. Does it, no I'm, I'm saying. I'm saying like. Sure. But, okay. you but yeah, if we're taking the text, yeah, okay. we can we can do that sure, sure, with anything. Sure. Yeah, if we take the text, yeah, yeah. cut off from the land of the living, he dies. He's not in the land of the living. He's in the land of the dead now. And then now we have here where it says that he's stricken for the transgression of my people, which are the Jews, right? So it can't be the Jews that's being stricken for the transgressions of the Jews. Okay, but like what? I, the Jews. I, I knew Isaiah 53. I don't take it as authoritative. Oh yeah, but okay, do you, so but like, do you, see, the, do you see the picture? I can see your position. Not my I'm position. Not, I'm not saying it's like... No, no, I'm not even giving my position, yeah. even though you know it. Yeah. Just based off the text, yeah. does it portray a savior who dies for the sins of the people? No. <laughs> no, I mean, that is one position you can take. Okay. But then, are you going to laugh at the Jewish position? Well, no, I'm not laughing. Oh, yeah, no, sure. yeah, I will laugh at the Jewish position. Okay, sure, if, they, if any Jew, sure. if any Jew says this ain't about the Messiah, yeah. I will laugh in your face. Because that's silly. Yeah. Okay? So look, you said it, it doesn't portray that. I've, but can yeah. we, can we, we're diverting from the actual We're not, because this is it. Okay, look, so look. this is your, I understand. Okay, look, we're talking look, about history. We're not talking about this is history. You said that sure. according to history. But I'm talking about history of first century Palestine. Yeah, this is what you, look. Okay. Th let me show you why this is relevant again. Sure. You said that according to the Christian story, this yeah. Christian narrative yeah. was influenced by the Romans. Yeah. Okay? So it's not an authentic story, this dying savior of the son of God. Yeah. This is something that the Romans, not totally made up, yeah. but they highly influenced. Which is why I asked you, okay, do you believe that in the Old Testament, before there was any, you know, any Romans, before I, I think, I think the issue is, maybe, what, we're, maybe we're talking past each other, because I'm not, I'm talking about other parts of, I'm not talking about the dying savior as in being influenced by the Romans. I'm talking about another part of the Okay, Jesus so this is why I asked, okay. brother. Okay, if, if, sure. if, if, that, if that's not it, sure. this is why I asked. So, what is your issue? So when, when you in, talk, when you you've got to understand that, the context. What is your issue we can't just ignore the complete context. So the context of first century Rome now was um, the figure, are you familiar with the god Apollo? Yes, but what does that have so, to do so with this? The god Apollo is known as being the son of God. So he's the son of Zeus, um, Jupiter, right? Okay. Yeah. So he's known as being the son of God. What does that have God to do Apollo. With this? In first century Palestine, under Nero's reign, Nero heavily leaned on the sun god Apollo. So what? Right? So what he did was he commissioned a massive statue of the sun god Apollo. So what? He was very into the arts and Apollo is the god of the arts. Hey. So why I'm saying, why, why do you have to rush history? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, Brother, dude, Because history you're said you're trying to get minutes. to a Yeah, no, but I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to get more time. I'm happy to get more time. I would you to speak with God. Yeah, just, it, oh, it's, it's, okay, it's okay, fellas. It's okay. 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 Sorry, sorry. If you want to talk. Let me, let me just answer this one thing that you said about Isaiah. You said it'll see his seed, his literal seed. Yeah. You get it from the Hebrew word zero, right? Yeah. Okay. So in the book of Isaiah, if we go to chapter 57, verse 4, yeah. Yeah. it literally says that, you know, talking about people who are deceitful and who are sinners. Give me just um, 10 more minutes. Yeah, just, 10 more minutes, honestly. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, thank you for your patience. So 10 more minutes. What? Can you read the Psalm 2? No, not right now. So, so if you have Isaiah 57, verse 4. Isaiah 57, verse 4. Isaiah 57, verse 4. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm talking. You, you know your position. I know my position. I know, but I want, want to talk about understanding. Just feel, man. I'm not telling him nothing. Just feel. Just feel. Just feel. Just feel. Can see your mom. Behave. Okay, okay, okay. We I, I, I want to show you that, because this is important. So everyone, listen. Yeah, this, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, how long have we been? Oh, oh, no, 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 because what they can't do is they can't answer. I can't read. I can't read. He's not with me. He's not. He's not. He's not. We are together. We are together. Oh, you are together. Yeah. Come on, brother. Come on. 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 Come Literal sea, literal offspring. Okay, so this was an objection to Isaiah 53 being about Jesus. However, when we go to Isaiah 57, I just need to answer this and then we can get back to this. All right, 
In Isaiah 57 verse 4, this is what it says. Okay, same book. It says this. Who do you ridicule? Against whom do you make wide your mouth and stick out your tongue? Are you not children of transgression, seed of deceit? Same words, Zerah. Now, I know we all know that deceit does not have literal children, right? right. So that's figurative. Right. It's the same word used for the Messiah when he says he will see seed because it's meaning he will see those who followed his footsteps, those who followed him like his apostles, the believers. Just like these who are seed of deceit are those who follow deception, practice deception. So, so yeah, I'm just explaining it, man. So just like that, this common objection that this seed has to be literal is, you know, it's, it's false. Okay? okay, so I hope you guys know okay. that. I hope you know Thank that. You. Okay, but like back to the point now. So what I was saying was the sun god Apollo was becoming a very prominent figure in the Roman Empire. Nero, like, was very into the arts, made him the main god. Vespasian and Titus, when they took on the emperor lineage after him, they also leaned very heavily into the sun god Apollo and they commissioned um, coinage, they commissioned many, many signs with Apollo's sacred animal, which is the dolphin, and Apollo's anchor. Okay? What does this have to do? The early church, one of their main symbols was the same symbol as the god Apollo. What does this they are have also to do with preaching. This? They are, the early church was also preaching. Right? Tay. They're also preaching a son of God in some way, shape, or I, form. I want my I want right? I want to listen to everything you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, what you're so, saying I mean, is gonna... not on the point. So what's your YouTube okay, YouTube? if you're gonna say the original point was we're talking about Yeah, the, the original point. You're talking about history yeah. of Christianity sure. and the truthness of its narrative. Yeah. So we're talking about that. Yeah. And I'm showing you that you don't need the New Testament in order to get a dying, suffering Messiah that's gonna die for your sins. Sure, whatever. But that, so that's if, not, you, that's if, you, if you read this like, okay, yeah. la last last verse sure. I'll show you, and I just wanna ask you this, okay? But I'm not I'm not arguing about the dying, suffering Messiah concept coming from Roman paganism. I'm not arguing that. So was this, I'm, I'm was this a about, Jewish idea? I'm saying I, I don't have a position. It could I'm have asking been. It could you have right been. now. It could have been, sure, sure. What do you know, I'm at, no, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm, well, I'm it's saying. It's not it could have been, is it? But I'm saying we have Jews today that don't take that position. We got so you're Jews. trying to make it sound like it's a unanimous position. I, I, don't, but care. Well, I, I don't care what Jew, some Jews today say. We got Jews today that take this as a position. So if Jews, if Jews take this as a position, some Jews don't. Who cares? I'm at, let's be objective. It says here, he shall, it says here, therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death. Okay. Why? And he, look. You know and he's numbered with the transgressors. Mm. He bore the sin of many yeah. in this his death. This is not an authority. I don't even, how yeah. can you prove to me this is written by Isaiah? Well, I'm not, look, uh, that's a different discussion, yeah, which I would ha love to have. However, my question is this, please. please. My question is this. Yeah. Does the, does the scripture mm. before the New Testament yeah. portray a dying savior who dies for your sins? Does, do we and have I'm that telling in the Old Testament? You, I, identify much more with the position that that is talking about Israel when you put it in its full context, when you read the, how? the Isaiah 52, when you read Isaiah how? 54. How, how is this? I already showed you how it's yeah. not about Isaiah. I mean, uh, Israel. Because the whole, like throughout Isaiah, there is a um, narrative of the suffering Jewish people. Yes. And now you're saying it's zoomed in on this one well, Isaiah 53, it's zoomed in on one figure. Is, is there not, is there not also throughout Isaiah, zoomed in on this figure who will save the suffering Israel? Okay, so here you have Israel being saved by this individual. Yeah, but I'm saying, I'm saying that I'm still taking the position that why? Because when you understand, it says um, he will see his seed. I already broke right? it. Down. His seed. Yes, his, his, his disciples, his literal. believers. Yeah. It's not always literal. No, no, no. Uh, that's not I just no. I just showed you that it's not literal. Okay, okay, but we, we're gonna we're happy to disagree. I'm not gonna just gonna keep beating this point for no reason. Okay. Okay. So, sure. But going back to the position where I'm saying. Let's let's go ahead and wrap this up because it's. Sure, 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 sure. But what I'm saying is that the Romans. What I'm seeing when I read history is that the Romans are taking this new version of Judaism, which is Christianity, according to them, which is um, in line Doesn't with. Look new to me, bro. It looks, it looks like it's over 700 years but old, But you're talking bro. about a specific point. I'm talking about... I'm talking the, the about whole, the narrative of Christianity yeah, but you're that picking Jesus on a specific is the Son narrative. of God who died for our sins. I'm yeah, and looking the Son at of God narrative, and I see what that. I'm saying is there is a narrative in the Roman Empire where their main God during this time period is known as the Son of God. Does he die for our sins? That's that's one aspect was of the he, whole... Was he born in Bethlehem? You're, you're, I'm saying... That okay, has so nothing wait, to do with Christianity. How is... How, can you explain... Okay, so... 
Jesus of Nazareth, right? So was he born in Bethlehem or was he born, born in Nazareth? Born in, born in Bethlehem and he's, he's from Nazareth. He grew up in Nazareth. But how do we, but there was, um, so the story is that why was, why would Isa Al Islam's parents, why would they travel from Nazareth and go to Bethlehem? Well, so it's not that they traveled from Nazareth, it's that- Because they're from Nazareth, right? Well, no, no. So he was born in Bethlehem, yeah. right? Um, King Herod tried to have him killed. They flew, flew to Egypt. Yep. And then they came back and lived in Nazareth. What I'm saying is, this figure, Jesus of Nazareth, when he returns to Nazareth, right? Okay, yeah, I, mean, I don't want to take forever because you okay. want to, let, let me ask a question, let me ask a question. Okay. All right guys, well, well, we, we, we can go back, we can go back, we can go back, go back, go back in a minute. I, I just don't want to keep him for too Yeah, long. yeah, for sure, I'll, I'll be here. Uh, but, sorry, how long is it going to be? With it's going to be a while, I'm willing. It's going to be a while, okay. <laughs> I might just keep this going. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I don't want to look like some, I'm, well, I would like to take over. I had agreed to debate yeah, a lot of sure. jumped in, brother. Sure, you're but I got approached. Well, I got approached and then no, 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 sorry, he may be misunderstood. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get some analysis. Okay, okay, but let, let's just wrap up. Should we wrap up? Let's be fresh. We'll do a wrap up, guys. We'll do a wrap up. Do a wrap up. Oh, it's me? You go, you go. Okay, so just to wrap up this conversation, like I said, from what I heard, and tried to understand from you sure. is that Sorry. there was a heavy pagan Roman influence yeah. on Christianity, on the Christian narrative, yeah. right? Especially when it comes to Jesus, the Son of God, you know, dying for our sins, whatever. This is not original to Judaism. It's not original to the Jew to the Abrahamic faith. Okay? And so that's why I wanted to bring you to like what I was asking you, yeah. when you're going through all this history. How does this affect the truth of Christianity, which rests in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? And I didn't see a link. If I'm being honest with you, I didn't see a connection. And this is why I brought up the Old Testament, forgetting the New, yeah. showing that it's clearly portrayed that we will have a dying Messiah who will save us from our sins, save us from our transgressions, who will be wounded and punished in our place for our sake. Okay? And so this will show is this will kill any accusation that this is some type of Roman influence if this narrative existed before the Romans, yeah. you know. So that was the point that I was bringing up, um, and that's 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 my position. Okay. Okay? Um, one thing I'm just gonna move on to my next point because I I kind of been we're being rushed here, right? So yeah. um, so what I wanted to get onto was. Um, this figure, Don Matilla, I'll try and wrap it up as quick as I can. No, no, Don Matilla. Not not happy. Happy. no, no, no it's the same point, just wrap, wrapped up, okay? So it's just, so you're, are you, are finishing, you finishing the point, finishing the point. Okay, okay so Don Matilla, um, who I alluded to as being a saint in the Catholic and Orthodox tradition, she, um, she is known as being the Emperor's niece. She had two children. Um, the Emperor Domitian, he didn't have any successes, so what he did was he reached out to his nearest kit of kin, which was Domitilla, promised her that her children will become the next Roman successors and the next Roman emperors. The emperor um, Domitilla and her husband Titus Flavius Clement were well known as being Christian, so if they were Christian, they had Christian children. So Christian Ro Roman children in the first century AD were promised to become the next emperors of the Roman Empire. And this is in the first century AD, so it shows the really early linkage between early Christianity and early Roman Empire. And that's where I wanted to wrap up. So okay. Well, yeah, I want to thank Tay for a good conversation, man. Yeah, it was very respectful. Yeah, so, man, appreciate you, man. It was no, very nice to meet you. Good. If you're around, I'm going to be here for hours. So. Uh, it's Eid, so I probably have to go. Okay, for sure. Well, but take thanks, care. thanks for taking take the time. Take care of yourself, no, I'll give you five minutes to uh, read.